Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. What time is it, David? Can't you see the clock on the dashboard? Oh, clocks and cars never work. Didn't you know that yet? They get mixed up with the gas or something. <laughs> what time is it, David? What time does it say? 5.15. Can't be that late, can it? Can't it, though? Look at the sun. What's the sun got to do with it? You mean to tell me that you, Mrs. Norton, a farmer's wife, a pioneer woman oh. who is about to set her foot on the soil of Connecticut, that you cannot tell time oh, by the sun. Oh, get to be so late? We were going to leave New York in time to get to Eastbrook before dark. Remember? I remember, yes. But the fates and the gods who sit on yonder clouds, they didn't remember. They didn't? No. They made my phone ring every time I tried leaving the office. You're so popular. Mm-hmm. And say, wasn't I wonderful to get the garage man and Fritz to pack the car? The eighth wonder of the world. Some long evening by the fire. You'll have to tell me what the other seven are. You remind me. I will. We should just about make it by dusk. Dusk in Eastbrook must be beautiful. You know, I think I wouldn't mind moving into our new house at dusk. I just wouldn't mind moving into our new house. (laughs) Bluff wouldn't either. (laughs) No Shakespeare. They've been on pins and needles all day. And I'm sure I haven't forgotten anything. Did you notice anything I'd forgotten? No, we'll soon find out. Oh, who cares, anyway? If I've forgotten, it's not important. Oh, David, I can't believe it. We're really on our way into moving into our new house. I just simply can't believe it. It's been a long pull, hasn't it? Yep. It's blasted traffic. Why do so many people have to drive around? Oh, the traffic's going in our direction, too. It. Well, this is the main highway, darling. All these people are rushing home for the night. Rushing? I've never rushed so slow. We're just <laughs> crawling along. <laughs> We're only going 25 miles an hour. And I'm sure the sun's setting much faster than that, David. I think I'll get off of this main road. There's a little road around here someplace that goes to East Brook the back way. Oh, we'll get lost. Nonsense. I came up this way the other day. It's a little longer mileage, but it cuts off all the traffic. If you're sure. Well, we've got to get there before dark or Paradiso will have left. He has the keys to the house. Are you excited? <laughs> I'm impatient. Same thing. But it's a cozy feeling to think of our house sitting and just waiting for us to come. And you know the queerest thing? I've stopped thinking of it as a house. I've sort of think of it more as a person now. That Mrs. Norton smacks faintly of whimsy. If there is one thing I am not, it's whimsical. (laughs) Oh, David, go faster. Please go faster. I don't even care if we get a ticket this time. Me? Get a ticket? Yes, you get a ticket. (laughs) Our our road is right down around the bend. We'll we'll turn off there and then uh, nuts to all the speed limits. Is that the road up past the filling station? That's it. We ought to be home in about 25 minutes. 25 minutes? Mm -hmm. Oh... Twenty-five minutes and we'll be in our house. No landlords, no Fritz and Bertha, no cities, no elevators, only a little old mortgage over our head. Sounds wonderful. Now, here we go. Hold on to your hat. Hold on to my hair, you mean. (laughs) (laughs) It's warm, isn't it? It is warmer than New York. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful night. Of course it is. The only trouble is I can't decide which I'd rather do. Walk around our property in the moonlight, or just sit in our house and let myself feel it all around me. Well, I tell you, we'll do both. Mm. Oh, now we're going nice and fast. Much faster than the sun, aren't we? <laughs> I hope the road stays smooth. Yeah. Are you sure the garage men packed the back of the car tightly? And everything won't jump out and fall all over the place? Oh, darling, this is exciting. I love driving fast. Well, don't you ever let me catch you doing it. Why not? It's just the same as driving slow, only faster. <laughs> David, what was that? Oh, all the... What is it? Why are you slowing up? 
It would have to happen now. Claudia, did you get the tires checked? Oh, the garage man said they were fine. David, it isn't... Oh, yes, a flat tire. Oh, no. A right front tire. Oh, no. What do we do? What do you think we'll do? David, I've never changed a tire in my life. I wouldn't know where to begin. Well, you just sit in the car, darling. Where are you going? To get the spare tire out of the trunk of the car. Here, hold my coat. David, there's no point in your doing that. I'll be warm enough. I can't work with my coat on. I don't mean the coat. I mean the trunk. Which trunk? The trunk of the car, silly. There's no point in your getting... What on earth are you trying to tell me? Just that the tire, it isn't there. It isn't? No. Claudia, where is it? Now, David, now, David, don't get excited. There wouldn't have been any room in the trunk for our trunk and the tire, too. And since the garage man said the tires were fine, well, I just, oh, I just... Oh, Claudia, you didn't. The tire's in the garage, David, and our trunk is in the trunk instead. Oh, no. Well, how was I supposed to know, darling? I never had a flat tire before. I didn't know they just went pop the minute you break a speed limit. David, who sold you our tires? You ought to get your money back. Oh, heaven grant me patience. Patience isn't going to do you any good. Only a spare tire will now. Oh. David, don't look like that. What time is it? All I know is that it's getting dark and we've got no tire. Why can't we just roll along like this? It seems very simple. It does, eh? Uh, we can't roll along like this. Why not? You want to wreck this car forever? You can't drive on nothing but the rim of your wheel. Well, that's what you get for being in such a hurry and getting off the main road. <laughs> if you'd stayed on that highway where you belong, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Are you blaming me for this? Or at least if it had happened there, where well, there'd be lots of people around with spare tires to give us. No wonder p tires look like lifesavers. You aren't angry, are you? Angry? Of course not. That's good. Because I'm really not blaming you. I'm not angry. I am furious. Where is your sense of humor? I think it's very funny. <laughs> Us sitting in the middle of no place on a back country road without a spare tire. Mm, very funny. I don't even see one house. I guess not so many people live in the country as I thought. Well, what are you going to do? You are going to sit here in the car. Oh, but Myself? Well, you have Bluff and Shakespeare to protect you. No, you take Bluff. You might need him. And take me, too. Where are you going? Back to the main highway, to the filling station at the crossroads. It's miles. And if you hadn't been going so fast, it wouldn't have been so far. <laughs> Not again, please. It, it's only about four miles. Only four miles is miles. Look, David, I don't want to stay here alone. Let me come with you. It's a long walk, darling. You sure you can make it? Dr. Rowland said I should walk a lot, remember? Well, this will take care of all my walking for days. All right. Come along. I don't know how I could have been such an idiot as to come off without checking the tires myself. We're there now, almost, aren't we? Practically. What time is it? I thought you could tell about time by the moon. Now, let me see. The moon says it's about, uh, 9.15. I wonder why that nail was lying around in the middle of the road. Such a waste of a nail. It was just waiting to flat our tire. <laughs> it knew we were coming. Of course it did. All of Connecticut knows we're coming. <laughs> At last. You're very tired, darling? Me? I feel wonderful. I never felt better. It was a beautiful walk. <laughs> You're not such a bad sport. You're not either. It'd be very dull if things happened always just the way you planned it, wouldn't it? Dull? It would be an event. Hey, David, look. What now? Our house. There it is. Up ahead, right there. Yeah. So it is. I can even recognize it at night. Oh, David, slow down. Please go very, very slow. I thought you were in a hurry. Not anymore. I want to sort of sneak up on it. I want to taste every second of arriving. Oh, now I am whimsical. Oh, now you're not. <laughs> Isn't it lucky there's a moon out? David, look, the roof's all silver. That's the moon on the roof, darling. I don't blame it. The house looks very white, doesn't it? Oh, darling, we're here. Here's the driveway and here's the mailbox. Our house looks so safe, David. These tall trees standing around. Aren't they quiet? There's a light burning in the living room. 
Paradiso must have left it. And the key. I wonder where he left the key. We'll find it. Getting out, darling? Oh, yes. And, David, I'm glad we had a flat tire. You are? It's nice arriving at night. It's so private. <laughs> what kind of birds are those? Where? Oh, you mean that sound? Yeah. They're not birds. They're frogs. That's supposed to be funny, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> darling, hold my hand. I'm holding it. Well, what's the matter? You're shaking. Am I? Mm-hmm. David, the house looks as if it's lived in, doesn't it? It is lived in. By whom? Oh, by a young couple. Married about seven months. The husband's an architect. Wonderful architect. And wonderful husband. And the wife is a beautiful young woman who's going to make a beautiful young mother. They're very happy here, aren't they? Very. Oh, look on the door. There's a note tacked on the door. Paradiso must have left it. You want me to strike a match? <laughs> and insult that beautiful moon? I should say not. Yeah. Let me see. What does it say? Let's see. Dear Norton's, I knew you would come whether the sun sets or not. <laughs> so there's a kettle on the stove. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I put the heat up to 68. And come right in. <laughs> the door's open. Happy landings. Paradiso. The door's open. I love the way it squeaks. I hope it always squeaks. There. Put your arms around my neck, darling, because here's our threshold. And you, you are about to be carried over it. I am? Mm-hmm. Well, darling, I've forgotten about thresholds. We've been married so long. We're just beginning. And it's a very lucky husband who gets to carry his wife. And almost his son. Over the threshold at the same time. Today, tomorrow, whenever you say, have a Coke, you know you're offering the same delicious refreshment Coca-Cola has always provided. Because it's always delicious, because it's always refreshing, you depend upon Coca-Cola as the very essence of gracious hospitality. The house looks beautiful at night, doesn't it, Joe? Beautiful at night and beautiful at day, David. Glad you finally moved in. Oh, so we, we've got the whole weekend to get settled. You'll need the weekend, and I'll bet you'll need a lot more. Oh, don't remind me. You know, I've only been here about a half hour already, and I'm resenting the fact that Monday morning I'll have to go back to New York for the day. Well, how do you feel about commuting? I don't know yet. I'll be able to tell you more about it on Monday because that's the first morning I'll have to catch that commuter's train. Hope you make it, David. Something tells me I better start getting ready for it now. So long, Joe. So long, David, and have a nice weekend. See you Monday. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember... Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> 